in today's tutorial we'll be just throwing this together here in Photoshop what you see in front of you and it's so that I can show you an important feature called color range in Photoshop. We'll also be using layer masks, styles, and also gradients. So let's get started. The first thing you want to do is grab a fence image and I went to Stock Exchange. The URL is sxc.hu. Just type in fence in the search box right here and get your fence. And it's best if you have a fence that's on a solid color background. Um, you can do it with multicolor background, but it's a lot more difficult. And for the demo, I'll just be showing you on a black background, a fence on the black background. So I'm just going to go ahead and delete these layers, start from scratch, and this is the fence I chose. It's on a black background. So let's go ahead and come up here to select color range. And I'm going to take the eyedrop tool and select this black right here, bring the fuzziness up to 172 or thereabout, and press OK. And then before you do anything else, you need to come back up here to select inverse or shift control I. And then next thing we can do is go ahead and press Control J. And we have a new layer here. Let's hide the background. And you can barely see it, but it's there. So let me go ahead and toss up a gradient that you saw before by pressing G. Um, first, make a new layer. Press G for the gradient. Come in here and pick your colors. I picked these blue and green colors. Press OK and then just drag from the top right corner down to about two-thirds to the left corner and let go and there you have a gradient and then next thing we're gonna do is go ahead and add some layer styles to this um, fence that we cut out and let's go ahead and add an outer glow so just double click on the layer check the outer glow and make sure you go to it and we're just going to leave it at screen and we're going to bump this all the way up to 100%. And then we're also going to add an inner shadow. Go to inner shadow. And let's change the color. Oh, that's inner glow. Let's make sure we have inner shadow. And in inner shadow, let's just leave it at 75. 30% is fine and 505 for the distance token size and you're good press OK actually before we press OK while we're in here let's just go ahead to pattern overlay and now for a more realistic fence you can do a pattern called metallic snake skin um, find it here this one right here metallic snake skin 128 by 128 click it and then let's go ahead and drop this to about 72 looks good and then let's also make the scale let's bump it to about 35 and that'll kind of give you a rough fence kind of look if you want that one but I'm gonna make a colorful one so let's go ahead and change this up I'm gonna pick this tie-dye right here 64 by 64 and then I'm gonna bump this back up to a hundred percent and then the scale I'm going to make all the way up to a thousand and there we go and let's press OK and let's also, while we have this layer, let's just duplicate it, and you'll see why later. Um, hide up these effects. And let's go ahead and grab the text tool by pressing T. And I'm going to drag out a big text box like so. And you're going to want your... Um, character size. I picked a font called Tahoma. You can pick whatever you want. And I'm going to go ahead with a size of 120. And let's go ahead and type in visit developphp.com. 
and there we go and let me actually make that bigger let's go with 150 check that size out that looks all right let's go ahead and go ahead with that next thing we want to do is go back in here and change your color now for your text color um, I chose a yellow color to kind of go with Adam's develop PHP but you can choose whatever color you want I chose this hexadecimal color C6A804 and then just press OK and before I get out of here I want to go ahead and bump it up a little bit more to 170 and I'm going to not do that I'm going to hide this and then I'm going to come back to the text tool hold down the mouse button while I drag over a little bit and that will bring your text all back up to one line I'm going to shrink that down a little bit and commit the changes there back to the move tool by pressing V or clicking this button up here and then let's go ahead and add a layer style this one uh, let's pick a drop shadow you can double click to get in here click the double shadow check mark and let's go ahead and choose the color and I chose a darker yellow than the text is and that's perfect so just press OK let me actually tell you that's 776502 for the hexadecimal code and press OK leave it set to multiply 75% and the angle make sure use global light is checked off and let's go ahead and 142 and then these down the distance speed and size should be set to default 505 and then let's go ahead and click bevel emboss and then outer bevel Up here let's go ahead to smooth and for depth let's go 541 percent make sure it's set up and the size and soften our default fine is five and zero and then let's go ahead and pick the texture here and in the texture this one right here is kind of fuzzy looking and then click off of it and let's choose scale let's go about 184 and depth 100 and that looks good press OK and then let's bring this copy of the fence layer up above the text and that'll drop it behind and then let's go ahead and add a layer mask to this fence layer that's on top by clicking this button right here and then click on the layer mask make sure it's selected and press control I and that hides it and the reason we're hiding it instead of painting the other way is because it'll be a lot easier this way we only have to paint a little bit instead of a lot and go ahead and grab your brush tool and make sure that white is set by pressing D for default and then we can just go ahead and start painting over here whatever we want to stick out you know it's up to you really make sure that you just paint right over what you want there on this on this layer mask and I'm gonna do it really quickly uh, so that we don't run out of time here and go and let's do one more right here okay and that makes your visit develop PHP um, and I hope you learned about the color range and if you need to go back through it go ahead and look at the beginning especially because that that color range is really 
really, really, really helpful. And don't be using the wand tool trying to select individual like squares or diamond shapes out of the fence. It just will take you forever. <laughs>